Why would you bind and gag yourself before throwing yourself head first over the railing of a balcony? Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to introduce a new case that I'm going to be talking about on this channel. Now, I'm still going to be talking about the Idaho 4 case because there's still so much information coming out and there's still so much information that I still want to talk about. I haven't really covered a lot of the security cam footage and Banfield and the footage from Linda Lane and there's a lot of aspects of that crime that I still want to talk about, and I still have a lot of ideas, and I still have a lot of questions about the Idaho 4 crimes. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, this weekend, I'm going to begin talking about the Delphi crimes, which these crimes are, this is a case I've wanted to talk about for a while. So this weekend, we're going to begin diving into the Delphi crimes. Now, today, I want to introduce you to the Rebecca Zahau case. So, I've been looking into this case for quite a while now. These crimes occurred in 2011. But I wasn't really made aware of this case until probably about just over a year ago. And the details of the Rebecca Zahau case really caught my interest because there's a lot of details in this crime that don't make sense. So obviously when I heard about this crime, I wanted to dig into this crime and, and, and try to make sense of a lot of these ideas and a lot of these details that surround this crime that simply just defy common sense. Now, if you're not familiar with the Rebecca Zahau case, I'm going to give you a brief backstory. And I'm going to kind of talk about the crime, let you all know kind of what happened and some of the confusing details. And then in future videos, we're going to break this crime down and kind of take a look at a lot of these common sense issues. Now, Rebecca Zahau was 32 years old, and she was living in Arizona. Now, in 2008, Rebecca Zahau meets a man named Jonah Shacknai. Now, Jonah Shacknai is very, very wealthy. He's the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. And this pharmaceutical company is, they're known for selling basically plastic surgery fillers. So something such as Botox, that would, be, that would have been their competition at the time. Now, Jonah has made a lot of money in his life. He's very, very, very wealthy. And he meets Rebecca at her work when he's in Arizona. And him and Rebecca fall in love. Now, Jonah... He has a son, a six-year-old son named Max, who he has from a previous marriage to his wife, Dina Romano. Now, Max is six years old, and he's a very healthy little kid. So, Jonah has a house in Coronado, California. Now, if you're not familiar with Coronado, California... Coronado, California is a very, very wealthy area of California. Multi, multi-million dollar homes on the ocean. So it's a really beautiful area and it's a very, it's a very expensive place to live. Well, Jonah owns a mansion in Coronado, California. And this mansion is one of the largest mansions in Coronado. This mansion was originally built for John Spreckles, who was a, he was a sugar magnet. And uh, this house, this, this mansion was built for John Spreckles, and it was, it was called the Spreckles Mansion. And so we'll refer to this mansion as the Spreckles Mansion. So Jonah and Rebecca 
and Max were spending the summer at the Spreckles Mansion in Coronado, California in the summer of 2011. Now, on July 11th, Jonah was at work and Rebecca was at the mansion with Max, as well as her sister, Zena, who was visiting the mansion for the summer. Now, sometime on July 11th, Zena, Rebecca's sister, was getting ready to take a shower. And Rebecca was in a downstairs bathroom of the mansion. Now, Rebecca hears a loud crash. And she runs out of the restroom and she finds six-year-old Max on the ground at the bottom of the stairs on the first story. Now, Max has fractures to his face and he has a spinal cord injury. When Rebecca finds him, he's laying on his back with his, his scooter is laying across his legs and there is a crystal chandelier laying next to Max on the floor. Now, it's not on top of Max, but the, the chandelier is laying on the floor next to Max. So immediately, Rebecca begins tending to Max and she begins calling to her sister, Zena. Now, while Rebecca is tending to Max, Zena is calling 911 right away. And Rebecca is trying to talk to Max and she tells authorities that the only word that Max says is ocean. Rebecca tells authorities that Max uttered the word ocean, which ocean was the name of Rebecca's dog. So right away, Rebecca thinks that maybe the dog tripped Max or she doesn't really understand exactly what happened. Now, Max has fallen from the second story over the banister of the stairs. So when first responders show up to get, to, to get Max, to take him to the hospital, he's not breathing and he's unresponsive. So they take Max to the hospital and Jonah goes to the hospital. Dina Romano, Max's mother, goes to the hospital and family begins coming into town to support Jonah and support the family while Max is in, this, in the hospital. Now, Max appears to be stabilized when he gets to the hospital and uh, begins to even show some signs that he might be doing a little bit better. He may be improving. So Jonah and Dina, Max's mom, stay at the hospital and, you know, they want to be by Max's side. So Adam Shackney also comes into town, and Adam is Jonah's brother. Now, Adam is a tugboat uh, captain on the Mississippi River. So Adam comes into town to support Jonah. Now, on the 13th of July, two days after Max falls, falls over the banister to the first floor, uh, they all go to dinner, Jonah, Rebecca, and Adam. They all go to dinner, and they have dinner on the 13th. Jonah returns back to the hospital to be by Max's side. And Rebecca and Adam, Jonah's brother, return to the mansion. Now, Adam is staying in the guest house. So this mansion on the property, there's a guest house and there's also like a maid's quarters. And so this is a big property. This is a real big property. Now, Adam is staying in the guest house and Rebecca 
is staying in the mansion. And at this point, Rebecca is by herself because Zena has returned home. So the next morning, on the, on the morning of the 13th, Adam is walking towards the main, towards the mansion from the guest house. And he sees Rebecca. And Rebecca is hanging from an exterior balcony outside of a bedroom. Now, Adam immediately runs into the kitchen and grabs, grabs a knife. And he also grabs a three-legged table that he runs out with. And he uses the table to stand on. And he uses the, the table to stand on and to cut Rebecca down. So somehow Max is able, or somehow Adam is able to balance on this table and cut Rebecca down from, from the railing of the balcony. Now, Rebecca was suspended from a rope. And Rebecca's hands and feet were both bound. Behind, her hands were bound behind her back. Now, the knots that were used to, to tie this rope that was binding her wrists and her ankles were pretty complex knots, uh, kind of known as knots that would be used in boating. So the knots were rather complex that were used to bind her hands and feet. Now, she was also gagged. She was gagged with a long sleeve blue t-shirt. And this t-shirt was, was wrapped around her neck twice and then tied in a double knot. And she was gagged with this t-shirt. Now, Rebecca Zahau was also naked. So she didn't have any clothes on. Now... When Adam cut her down, she, she, she fell into the courtyard of the mansion where her body was left for a period of time. They never covered the body. They, never, they left her body just laying in this courtyard. Well, there was, a, there was a media helicopter flying overhead at this point who is video taping footage of Rebecca laying in this courtyard. They never, they never bothered to cover her body. We're going to get into all these details at, uh, down the road as we go in future videos. There's a lot of very strange details about this crime. Now, Rebecca, because her hands and her feet were bound, investigators believed that she would have had to hop from, the rope was, was secured to the bed inside the bedroom. So the rope that she used was secured to the bed inside the bedroom. And then she went over the railing of the balcony. Now found next to the bed was a white garbage bag. And under that white garbage bag was a black tube of paint, like, a, like a, an acrylic type of artistic paint. There was also a large paintbrush and a small paintbrush. There was a large knife and a small knife. And these were all found next to the bed in the bedroom where Rebecca were in in the bedroom where Rebecca was at right before she apparently allegedly threw herself over this this railing of this balcony now along with these items there was a message there was a message painted on the back of the bedroom door 
And the message said, she saved him. Can he save her? It was a very odd message. Now, the details around this case are very strange. Toxicology reports showed that there were that there were no illegal substances or alcohol in Rebecca's system at the time of her death. Now, nobody's ever been charged for these crimes because it was ruled that Rebecca took her own life. Now, it seems very strange that she would bind herself at the ankles and be able to bind herself behind her back at the wrists, as well as gag herself. Because she would have basically had to... The, the, the railing on the balcony is pre, was pretty high. So she would have had to basically throw herself head first over the balcony. Now, the rope was also tied around her neck and it was around her hair. So she hadn't pulled her hair out from under the rope. It was around her hair. And as I said, she was, she was naked. Very strange. Now, people believed that Rebecca possibly took her own life because of the guilt that she felt about Max. People believed that she felt so guilty because she was responsible for watching Max. And the fact that Max fell over the banister and was now in the hospital caused her so much guilt and pain that she took her own life. Now, Rebecca's family would dispute this. Rebecca's family, obviously she felt a ton of guilt. Obviously she felt horrible about this. But Rebecca's family did not believe that she would take her own life. They just didn't believe that. Now Jonah believed that it was possibly that she was shaming herself due to her guilt for Max's accident. Now, Max Max lost his battle with his injuries on July 16th. Max lost his life due to brain injuries. So, it, it's a very strange case. Now Rebecca's now Rebecca's family, the Zahows, they did they they did file a civil suit against Adam Shacknai, Jonah's brother. Now Jonah's brother was the only one on the property, apparently, when Rebecca took her own life, allegedly. So Rebecca's family did file a civil suit against Adam and they won. They won this civil suit against Adam. Now Adam did call 911 immediately after he had after he had cut Rebecca down from from the railing. He did call 911 immediately. There's a lot of strange aspects of this case. There's a lot of details and there's a lot of details that I haven't mentioned in this recap because as I said, we're going to break this apart and we're going to go in and talk about all these details. So please stay tuned for future videos about the Rebecca Zahau case. And as I said, I'm still going to be talking about the Idaho 4 case. And this weekend, we're going to be covering the Delphi crimes. 
So please stay tuned and please like and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.